So, namaste. So, today we start with uh, start with the lecture. Uh, we will cover some of the fundamental aspects of yoga. So, we'll start with uh, the, the basic question as to why we do yoga. Why do we practice? Why do we come here and, and you know, do all these practices? Why yoga? To answer that question, then we have to look at what do we mean by yoga? So, why yoga? First, we have to be clear of what is yoga. And though it sounds like a very simple question, um, most people are, have different meanings given to yoga. Okay. So, what is yoga? Um, some of the source teachers, like Padanjali says, yoga is a state of deep, insightful wisdom which can arise in us in the wake of sharp concentration and broad awareness. Is it okay? Yoga is a state which arises in us in the wake of sharp concentration and broad awareness. So, in that definition, yoga is not something we can just do. Yoga is something we can receive. Yoga is something which has to come on itself. Uh, it has to arise in us. And that state of wisdom arises in us again due to two capacities which has to again rise in us, which is this sharp concentration and broad awareness. Is it okay? Because even here, when I, we were here two days earlier, so we were just going around the places, and when we engage in conversations, uh, people do ask me, so your retreat, um, what time is the yoga practice? So we say it starts at 6 a.m. and uh, it goes on. What is at 6 a.m.? And then, then when we say that it is a lecture, or um, then they say, no, 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 what time is the yoga practice? You know, so, <laughs> so there's a particular um, uh, thing which you have to do, which they identify as yoga. I was quite surprised, even here that, that idea is not removed, that yoga is something we do. So yoga is something which rises in us, okay? And uh, that's a state of wisdom. For, for the arising of which we need these two qualities of very sharp concentration and very broad awareness. Now, what benefit does this wisdom give us? The sharp concentration and broad awareness brings forth wisdom, wonderful. What does it do for us? Okay, the benefit. The benefit, Padanjali says that it's simple. It liberates us from suffering. Okay, heyam dukkam, that is the statement of Padanjali. So this is the wisdom which ends suffering. So, so they don't say like in a yoga will answer questions such as, uh, I want to realize my true self. Such kind of thing is not what is promised in the first place by yoga. That maybe you will, but its promise is there is suffering. And yoga, when it rises in us, it will end suffering. Okay. So this is very core. And I just want to summarize this one more time. So yoga is a state which rises in us. It's a state of wisdom for which to rise. First, two conditions of sharp concentration and broad awareness has to already rise in us. Only in the wake of that will this wisdom rise. We can't do yoga, okay, in a strict sense. It has to rise in us, yeah? And it is for ending suffering or to minimize suffering. So, how do we cultivate this sharp concentration and broad awareness. How do we cultivate that? Because only when we have these two, that wisdom will rise. So we need the sharp concentration and broad awareness. How do we cultivate that? Because concentration also, we can't simply say, I'm going to concentrate on my breath for the next hour. We can't say that. I mean, we can say that, but it might not happen. Okay. So concentration is also a state which is going to rise in us that deep mindful awareness of moment to moment, whatever is rising, that also is a, is a capacity which has to rise in us. So what is that which we can do? So the teachings tell us our practice is on 
stabilizing exclusive attention and stabilizing inclusive awareness. So these are two qualities which has to rise in us. Can we have a stable, exclusive attention? And then can we slowly nurture a stable, inclusive awareness? So here I'll, I'll